In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to calculate potential cumulative GPA changes resulting from the flexible grading options of a pass, grade of P, or a pass satisfactory, a grade of PS. Log into DegreeWorks through the normal methods. Click on the GPA Calc tab. It should automatically go to the Term GPA tab, but if not, you can click on the correct tab here. By default, the calculator will fill in any courses that you're currently taking or any courses that do not yet have a final grade. You'll see your current cumulative GPA reflected, as well as the total number of GPA credits earned at VCU already. This does not include transfer credits, does not include any courses that are still in progress, and does not include any courses where a grade of P was earned previously. To effectively calculate different GPA scenarios, it's best to know two things. Look at the bottom of your unofficial transcript in eServices. Find the section at the bottom that says Transcript Totals, and then the row that says Total Institution. Follow that row across and write down your quality points in your GPA hours. So I'm writing down 142 quality points and 41 GPA hours. Divide the quality points by the GPA hours and enter this GPA with all the decimals you see on the calculator in the current GPA field and the GPA hours into the credits earned so far field. So I'm going to enter 3.463414634146341. Adding in all these additional decimals will help avoid any errors resulting from starting from a rounded GPA. The second thing that's helpful to know is what final grade you expect you'll be earning in each of your Spring 2020 classes. If it's too early to predict that, you might play around with a few different scenarios to see how it affects your GPA. I'll walk you through a few examples. The really important thing to remember is that if you're using the calculator to propose a grade of P or PS, you must manually change the credits for the course to zero, or else the calculation will not work right. It'll actually calculate your GPA as if you'd earned an F in that course instead of a P. The same concept applies if you are putting in a W for a course you're considering withdrawing from, as long as the deadline has not yet passed. You should manually change the credits to zero. We'll first start with what grades I expect to earn. Let's say I think I'll earn all Bs for these four classes I'm in. So I'll change each of these grade values next to the four classes I'm taking to B. I'm not using a P, PS, or W so I don't need to change any credits. Now I'll press the Calculate button. This calculation shows me that with a current GPA of 3.46341, etc., if I get all Bs, my cumulative GPA should drop to 3.358. Now I'll press the Recalculate button and try something else. I think I might get a C in Organic Chemistry, which is Chem 301, so I'm going to put that in and leave the other grades at B. Now I'll press Calculate and see that my GPA would drop now to a 3.302. But what if I took a P for Chem 301 instead of a C? Let's see what happens. So I'll recalculate and enter a P for the grade for Chem 301. Because I'm using a P, remember that I have to manually change the credits to zero for this course. I've done that and now I'll press Calculate. If I get a B in three courses and take a P in Chem 301, my cumulative GPA would still drop, but not as far. I would have a 3.380 cumulative GPA, where I would have gotten a 3.358 with a B and a 3.302 with a C. You can continue to calculate and recalculate your potential cumulative GPA until final grades are posted to the eServices transcript and loaded into DegreeWorks. Once final grades are posted, typically during and after the exam period in May, 
The GPA calculation becomes a bit more complicated and you should work with your academic advisor to calculate changes. I hope this video has been helpful and please remember to contact your academic advisor with any other specific questions.